Male Infertility Microsurgical Training, a step-by-step -step instructional video. Center for Male Reproductive Medicine and Microsurgery, Wild Cornell Medical College. Microsurgery has become an essential technique in many surgical specialties, including urology. Male infertility microsurgery consists of a set of highly physically, technically, and mentally challenging microsurgical procedures. Use of the operating microscope can dramatically change the scale of surgery. It takes time to adjust the finger and hands movement under the operating microscope. Due to the small size of structures in the male reproductive tract, most of male infertility microsurgeries are performed in the magnification ranges from 10 to 20 times power. Surgeons don't know the surgical outcomes for months or even years after surgery. Success in male infertility microsurgery is heavily dependent on the quality and extent of practice and training in the lab. A surgeon's hand-eye coordination, dexterity, and steadiness can be developed during practice in the lab. The basic equipment for male infertility microsurgical training includes the operating microscope, microsurgical instruments, and sutures. To further improve the learning process, we strongly recommend a video capture system composed of a digital camera and video recording device. The operating microscope is the most important equipment for microsurgery. A good operating microscope should provide a wide, stable, smooth focusing system with a bright 3D, true color illuminated field for microsurgery. The basic instruments for male infertility microsurgery training are a straight fine tip forceps, a non-locking needle holder, a blunt tip dissecting scissors, a fine tipped bipolar cautery forceps, a vessel dilator, and the Goldstein Microspike Approximator. The most used sutures for male infertility microsurgery are the 10O and 9O mono nylon sutures with bi curve of half circle needles. For basic training, we suggest the use of 10O mono nylon suture pack with a 3 8 circle needle. We also recommend a latex practice card for basic suturing training. A video system composed of a digital camera connected to a monitor and a recording device is useful for microsurgery learning. This system allows people that are not directly performing the procedures to watch them. Recording procedures is another tool that speeds up the learning process. It enables the trainee to watch his or her own mistakes and helps with planning to prevent repeating of the same mistakes. and a comfortable body position is imperative to prevent fatigue, pain, and tremors. Your seat, table, and microscope should be aligned permitting your head to sit straight on your neck. Your eyes should look straight ahead, perpendicular to your spine. You can allow a discrete curvature of your spine to avoid tension on your perivertebral muscles. If seated, your legs should form a 90 degree angle with your thighs and your feet should be able to operate any pedals. Elbow and forearm support are crucial to decrease tremors. The pencil holding position is recommended because it increases fine movement control. It offers a maximum ergonomic support for the surgeon's hand, and it decreases hand tremor. In this position, the instrument rests on the lateral face of the middle finger and is manipulated using the ventral face of the thumb and index finger. The ring and little fingers support the middle finger and transfer the weight of the instrument to the table. With this position, the surgeon utilizes the fine movements of the muscles of the thumb and index fingers, allowing fine control of the instrument while providing maximum ergonomic support for the surgeon's hand. Urologic microsurgery utilizes fine needles and suture material, which are easily damaged if held too firmly. Developing a secure but gentle touch is important to accurately control microsurgical instruments with minimal trauma to the suture materials. The first step to load a needle with forehand position is to position the needle tip pointing to the surgeon's left. Then, hold the needle with the forceps, avoiding the needle tip. Using the needle holder, put the needle in upright position. 
Grasp the needle at approximately one half to two thirds of the way up from the tip. Use a flat surface as a support for the needle while manipulating it. Adjust the needle direction with a gentle touch of the forceps tips. Under low power magnification, the needle is passed perpendicular to the tissue plane, following its curvature. Using the forceps as a support, the needle is grabbed again. Choose an exit point at the same level of the entry point, with a bite equal to that on the right edge. Pull the needle out through the tissue with several small movements following its curvature. Pull the suture with a movement parallel to the table and with the forceps as support. Stop pulling the suture when a 2-3 mm length of the suture tail remains. Pull the needle and redundant length of suture away from the suture site before tying the knot. After pulling the suture, the long end is grasped using the forceps. With the tips of the forceps grasping the suture, a single loop is made using a clockwise motion. The tips of the needle holder are inserted into the loop and encircled clockwise to make the second loop. The needle holder and the forceps are moved together to pick up the suture's short end. The first double throw knot is completed by pulling the needle holder and forceps, crossing hands. The second single throw knot is made and the short end is grasped with the forceps. The second single throw knot is tied carefully, maintaining tension for three seconds to avoid loosening of the knot. The surgeon's knot is completed by tying the third throw square and flat. The suture is cut with micro scissors, leaving 0.5 millimeter ends. In summary, learning microsurgery requires a lot of practice. Hands on microsurgical lab training is essential. Microsurgery should be learned in the lab, not on patients.